so soil is the basis of all terrestrial life of course um and it's a whole living ecosystem in itself. Uh, it contains every kingdom of life when you get into the uh, concept of what is soil. Um, it's an incredibly complex question, but you could say soil is life or something very short like this. We could say soil is the only triphasic, one of the only triphasic substances that contains liquid, air and water within it. And it has to contain those things or it is not soil anymore. Um, Soil is a habitat for many, many creatures, so it is home for many things. And of course, yeah, it is the basis of life and it is also the digestion system of the planet in many ways because this is where all nutrients in the end are cycled and where we will be recycled in the end. So, yeah, soil is the universe in a way. Soil is the, it is the most important part in many respects of any land these ecosystem. Soil is mostly made out of uh, sand, silt and clay. Sand and silt are different particle sizes of the same material, rock. And clay is made of plates of aluminium and silica. The clay is what has most of the cation exchange points which hold on to the plant chemistry. You have the roots of the plants. From the roots, you have root hairs. But you also have fungi, uh, particularly the mycorrhizal fungi, which become closely associated with the roots and are actually fed by the plant directly. But then they produce very, very fine strands called hyphae, which penetrate into the soil and penetrate into the minerals in the soil. Even. And they will be drawing some of those minerals, particularly phosphates, in into the towards the plant. But then you also have many, many different types of uh, bacteria and uh, mites and nematodes and there's a massive diversity of organisms there and then you have the relative giant and all of these organisms are all producing the enzymes which they need to 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 access nutrients from the soil to break down organic matter to perform their part of it and all the time you're disturbing the whole of the the soils fertility building ecosystem. That goes back to the stars, really. Like that, I mean, everything that is bigger than hydrogen, though, is like stuck together in the middle of a star. So the presence of these molecules, like within our solar system, is a product of stars exploding in the past and sort of seeding the universe with these molecules, which are the molecules of life, and then those molecules being present as planets form. Although interestingly, like probably most of the water on our planet was brought here after the planet formed by comets. So, you know, but we are very much sort of products of the, of the universe, whatever you can say, like every molecule in your body was manufactured in the center of a star and every molecule in every plant ditto, which is interesting and fun to think about. Um, but how soil arises, how it kind of turns from a substrate that is just like little pieces of rock into a living, breathing thing. So yeah, geology plus biology, and you have soil. But 200 million years ago, most of this area, this, this bit of land, was uh, roughly on the, the same latitude as South Africa is today. And it was a big lake with mud deep at the bottom of the lake. And it's the muds, it's the mud from there that has formed the, the rocks and slate that, have make up, that make up Snowdonia. And so the soil that is here is very, very strongly influenced by, by that. So we, as, the, as, the, as that breaks down, we have a lot of silt, which is like a very fine sand. But here we're fortunate. We also have, on this farm, we have uh, quite a reasonable amount of clay. We have very little sand, proper sand. It's just this very, very fine silt, giving us a silty, uh, a silty clay loam. In farming, you know, we, we do disturbance, we disturb ecosystems, and sometimes we do damage. It's like, it's okay. Like, we need to grow food. 
understand what it is, the damage that you are doing, and have a plan to repair it. And if you can balance that, then you are doing okay. Yeah, I, I suppose I'd probably define technology very broadly as, as um, objects which have been uh, designed for a particular use. Rather than calling agriculture a technology, yeah, it is, agriculture is a wide range of technologies. I guess agriculture is a system of cultural practices that were invented or developed um, by human ingenuity. Well, the thing is, technology could mean many things, couldn't it? I mean, in the simplest sense, technology is just using tools, and a tool could be a stick, you know, it's a technique. So Southern Tag is a cooperative society. Um, we are uh, managed and run by uh, all of the workers. So you know, uh, all the workers are directors. Cooperatives are really an interesting way of uh, organizing ourselves. So you can have individual ownership of something or an individual or family business. But when you want to get a group of people to come together where you haven't got one person or uh, some external shareholders or something like that owning that business, that enterprise, that you want to have all the people who are most directly involved uh, collaborating together. I have a big family in France. I have four brothers um, and very loving parents. We all get along very well. When I moved to the UK, one of the things that I found complicated sometimes was to um, to have this kind of um, uh, support system around me and people who could like look after me if I was going through something hard or like also just looking after them if, if they needed anything and I have a range of skills that can help supporting these kind of projects as well. Care for each other, care for the environment and uh, for and with sharing education and trying to put together something which is going to be sustainable going into the future. Sustainable farming is it's a challenge as you say it's um, it's not easy you know if it was very easy we would always be doing sustainable farming but as it is you know we have a very high global population and I think it's important to recognize that you know we face unprecedented challenges now because it used to be that people could use land differently. You could use land and you could kind of finish with this land. Ah, it's broken, whatever. Just move on, use another piece of land. But like many traditional farming systems kind of depend on this. If you look at like patch regeneration, slash and burn, you know, systems like this, people have been able to move on from systems that they disrupted, allow them to regenerate, circle back around in 25 years and maybe it's fine, you can start again. But um, now we can't, you know, our systems have got to be like, sustainable in the place that they are in and they have got to be productive it means that it's a field of innovation right Okay, so um, at the moment, or well, until last year, the agriculture policy that is um, used in the UK is set by Europe, and um, that the main part of that is payments to farmers, which at the moment are based on land area. Um, one of the things that the Welsh government wants to change um, when that system finishes is to move to a system that pays farmers on the basis of public goods that they produce. And so they're in the process of developing this policy, which could be quite a radical change. Um, the current policy is very unfair to small farmers um, because it's, the, you know, the more land you have, the more money you get. Really restrictive licenses has become quite a big deal across the agricultural sector that um, particularly with tractors, um, the, the right to repair movement 
uh, which is a, a campaign of farmers um, that are trying to get the right to repair their computer controlled tractors, which at the moment they're um, excluded from, particularly by John Deere. Um, but uh, yeah, Massey Ferguson also do it quite a lot. Um, so that, that campaign is quite a big thing within the agricultural um, farmers are, are losing their uh, ability to be able to repair their own machinery. Yeah, open, open source technology isn't having a big impact in agricultural machinery. How are we going to prepare this milk? How are we going to plant through this milk? And as you get the, the questions, you start working towards having technologies to meet, the, to meet those questions. Whereas if your question is limited to how do we grow the biggest plant as quick as possible and kill off all the diseases, you will, uh, if that's your question, you will probably end up with a very big tractor which is going to be spraying all sorts of uh, biocidal chemicals on the land because you asked the wrong question. This is going to be an open source um, uh, autonomous tractor. If we can get some significant open source licenses on key pieces of technology and uh, have the data set that, that um, machines like this will use in order to make management decisions uh, collectively owned as a commons, then, then that will significantly change the balance of power between the farming peasants of the world and the massive corporations. It's essentially that the money provides the survival of farmers um, and that, you know, that's necessary. We don't want to see farms going out of business, but it doesn't incentivize a particular type of farming that is good for nature. So you can still be getting public money even for farming in a way that is very damaging. And um, for small farms like this one, you can be farming in a way that's very beneficial and not get anything. So you're in a marketplace that is actually subsidised, and this is an important thing to recognise as well, like industrial agriculture has been subsidised. It's still subsidised. People receive like large payments for owning lots of land um, and many other kind of forms of support um, that allow them to basically run unprofitable enterprises at a profit. Um, so we are in this dichotomy, we're like, oh, we want to be accessible, but we also want to restore the real value of food because otherwise we can't make a living. Because um, actually another problem with the system that pays on the basis of how much land is that it makes land more expensive. Um, because then you can get paid not dependent on the work you do or what you produce, but just for the land itself. And anyone who buys that land could then take over that. So again, it, it increases the price. Let's say that like many corporations, like some of the largest companies in the world are biotech companies, which actually in some ways now have like more power and freedom to operate than countries, you know, and more wealth. So <laughs> this is one of the things that makes it complex at an international scale is that these guys are, are um, operating internationally. Um, I suppose another thing is that we have a, a global food market anyway, like the food market became very globalised. Um, in fact, you know, when we look back to the roots of industrialisation, colonialism, like it's about commodities, isn't it, really, and how commodities move. So it's very like deeply entrenched in our history as industrial countries to have like actually a global resource base, which we abuse. You know, it's undoing that culture, I suppose, is part of what we're trying to do here is to try to remove is to try to divest from like what is essentially like an exploitative relationship with the rest of the world that became entrenched so if you think of the soil as being uh, the mother that feeds that it's everybody has become rather orphaned in that if we want to have a culture which isn't an orphan culture, but which still keeps that core connection to what feeds us, 
then we need to rebuild the relationships between all of us and the land and how we manage the soil. And the challenge is, is how to rebuild that, that connection. To be honest, I think that a lot of the factors that sustain um, industrial agriculture are political constructs um, and they are perpetuated by the people who benefit from them, like kind of all of these constructs. You know, I, I mean, I really think that people, it should be a human right to have access to land. And, you know, much of the um, power of industrial systems is built on denying people access to land. Actually, this is the first thing that you do if you want to control people is like destroy their connection to the land. Why? Because if people have no access to land, then they have no ability to sustain themselves and no choice but to participate in the system. You can understand that it's interlinked. Like if we look at Britain's industrial revolution, we understand that it was preceded by the agricultural revolution, which was quite largely a game of dispossession of like removing people from the land enclosures, all of this kind of thing, destroying of the commons. You know, that Wales could produce enough vegetables to provide five portions of fruit and veg every day for um, the whole population with just 2% of the land in Wales. Collaborating with uh, the sustainable food movement will really help to give a lot of focus to the open source hardware community and also gives them economic uh, relevance. A sustainable food movement would really benefit from this collaboration um, uh, because a lot of, sort of technical engineering solutions um, could really help us uh, be more labour efficient and economically competitive and grow and, and compete within the modern uh, food industry. Culture and how we live is becoming increasingly a question. When we think of the soil as itself, with all its biodiversity, is a culture. Our culture, the culture that we share as people, needs to have the values of, and connections with the soil culture if we're going to have a a way of living that is sustainable and is not in conflict with natural ecosystems. So yeah, I mean, I think that open source is, is very important within it, isn't it? Because if we look at biotech, like one of the main problems is, is the sort of profiteering, like biopiracy nature of things, of trying to like patent life itself. Owning the means of production relates to, to, to open source in the sense that like, if we as a community can create the tools that we need and can have ownership over the designs for them, um, then we can make them more freely available to people who are able to build those tools. Like, if you think of like, a healthy soil and the like, nutrient recycling that goes on within soil, you can think about this in two ways. One is in terms of like, information, that like you want information to very actively like, be available throughout the system. You want innovation to proceed quickly and share ideas freely. So that is why like open source is important. But also, you know, we can think about it in terms of resources. We can say that actually if you have companies who are profiteering from sustainable farmers, you actually have a linear flow. It's like being leached of nutrients, right? Then you get cycling of resources within the community instead of them being leached away from us, I suppose. And that's part of like being resilient. If the open source movement really reflects uh, reflects this ideal where you're looking at how you collaborate as being a really important part of it. If you look at uh, studies in uh, anthropology and neuroscience where people are looking, looking and saying are humans collaborators or are we just ruthless competitors and the answer keeps coming back is we are collaborators. That's who we are and we need to recognize this is how the world works and if we want to survive in the world we need to learn about that. We have meals together and we just share evenings together. Um, there's always someone for me to go and talk to if I need to. Um, and we're just we're much more effective as a group when we manage to, when we actually tackle down conversation and everything all right, like the work that we have been producing is a lot more rewarding because we're grateful to each other and it just gives it um, another meaning on the top of what we already do. 
which is we're just not doing it just for us. There's always like the uh, we're always mindfully centered to someone else as well. There is also a constant move towards cooperation, and that in practice, what happens is the whole is always greater than the sum of its parts. We have borrowed money from a very nice friend of us to, to buy the farm and we will sell the farm to the community. So what we will do is offer to people to own shares in the community farm and that's to therefore like have a voice somewhat um, in the management of the farm. The day-to-day -day management will stay with the co-op. But the fact that it is a farm, like if there should be any change to that, would have to like refer back to the people who own the farm, which hopefully will be very many people who will be invested in it being a farm. So it protects it from like the whims of, say, one landowner or one landowning family who could at some point decide that it was to their benefit to, to sell it to land developers to you know, build a multiplex cinema or whatever, or change it from being a farm into something else. It's having the freedom to shift and change and keep things fluid is part of how a soil, a soil culture works and it's constantly responding to what it needs. Whereas in human cultures, we have big dominant power structures and they have a, a very restrictive way about how we communicate, about how we respond to each other, what information we should share what, how we value that information and I think we need to learn how to be a lot more fluid and a lot more accepting of each other. Person to person, personally I would say person to person is always better. You see networks forming, you see people being uh, very reciprocating and, trust, and developing trust and confidence in each other and looking for win-win situations. It's collaboration and, uh, and sharing of information is the way that strong networks are built. A diversity of ideas, a diversity of approaches is really helpful, right? Because we don't really know the answers and the answers keep changing because the environment is changing and the context is changing. So actually we keep needing to change what we're doing all the time. We can't just fall back on static systems. This is the problem that I was saying before that, you know, if you don't change the, the farming system, like as the context changes, you end up doing things that are not making sense anymore, actually. Collective intelligence of a group is bigger than the single intelligence of one person.